Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we are going to be looking at the heroes from the Witches faction who will be receiving their awakening in the next update and this completes the faction. This will be a full faction of awakened heroes so it will be very interesting to see how they are going to be used from now on and the Witches have definitely gained a lot of use now seeing as they're very very potent in the event raids and soon to be nightmare raids so the Awakenings are definitely going to help people who are trying to progress in those types of raids. So we will start with Nora. Nora will be our go-to to begin with, going over her basic additional damage is increased. It doesn't doesn't even say the percentage, but I oh know it doesn't. No, no, that's my bad. That's my bad. This ability doesn't even give a boost to the damage of the ability. Deals additional damage equal to the sum of the target's physical and magical defense increased by five and three times, respectively. Ignore shield. So that part is being increased. Not against it. I would actually prefer this over a flat damage increase to the skill itself. It's situational though. It's obviously going to be more useful against tanks and um, characters with high magic resist tanks. But yeah, I think you could get a lot more damage out of the ability targeting the right person. But again, I mean, you've got to weigh out what are you getting from this compared to her other abilities. So let's jump into Icy Mist. Damage is increased by 35%. Casts more stacks of Frost Armor on allies. Frost Armor limit is increased. So where is Frost Armor? Frost Armor, at the start of the turn, the hero gains a shield equal to 6% of maximum HP for each Frost Armor stack. Okay, so you're going to get a lot more shielding from this ability. That's good. With Diana getting Awakening now, now this is a little bit of a spoiler, there is a lot more to do with shielding as well. So it's just giving a lot more survivability to the Witch's faction. Now you've got to remember as well, with a Belladonna in the team, characters like Flame and Tiona, Tiona more so, there is not a lot of healing going on. The protection from this team mainly comes from the shields they get. So this... This seems good. It would need to be tested though to see how beneficial the shield actually is. Got to remember as well, there are a lot of characters in the game that can easily bypass shield or benefit from when the enemy has a shield. A librarian, for example, I believe gets guaranteed crit if he hits someone with shield. So just got to be careful of things like that. Moving on to her next ability, Cryostasis. This is probably one of my favorite abilities in the game. Uh, just what it does and with characters like Ramfort and Siegfried, you can potentially get a lot of damage. I mean, we've seen videos of this Ice Block being cast on Ramfort, and it almost kills the whole team because he has such high defense. So what does it do? Damage is increased by 25 cast Ice Block on one additional random target. Oh, that is interesting. So Ice Block is a debuff that lasts for two turns. While under Ice Block, the target skips a turn and cannot dodge attacks or take any live actions. Um, if light allies or witches make a successful attack on a target under ice block, so this is the important part, the debuff is removed and the target and its allies take damage equal to the sum of the target's physical and magical defense increased by eight and three times respectively. It's a lot of, I mean, there's probably people that understand this quite well, but my level of mathematical skill, I, this makes not much sense to me. Like I would need to see the numbers step by step on a whiteboard or something before it makes any sense to me. So what I'm interested in, and again, I haven't actually tested these in battle. This is just theory crafting, talking about what's happening in the game. But what I would like to see is if you cast the ice block on a target and then it applies to another target, if you trigger the ice block on the first target and that damage explodes, does the damage of the explosion then trigger the second ice block? If it does, oh, we are, we are in a world where we're going to see some very interesting things very interesting things but yeah i like this i think again this would be so effective against any type of cloud wonder a team that has a ramfort or any team that has a ramfort he's just the most standout character he's the tankiest by far this ability is almost designed to take him out so again we just need to see it in action and moving on to her passive Apart from Shard of Eternal Ice, cast three stacks of Frost Armor as well. So, um, Shard of Eternal Ice, the Shaman enemy kind of surprise. Shard of Eternal Ice on Witches, characters under the buff ignore shields. 
armor and magic resistance when dealing damage. Each successful attack removes one stack. So she's getting seven stacks of... Oh, well. Each time an enemy casts a buff that provides any kind of defense, reduces the limit. Nora will cast seven on witches. Okay, so every witch or light ally is getting the seven stacks of eternal ice. But now they also get three stacks of frost armor. Seven is the max. So that's going back to this ability where five stacks of frost armor. So five plus, yeah, you, it sounds like it's designed to constantly keep frost armor up and your team is constantly getting shields. I think this is, I mean, you, we sometimes see some stuff in this game that is ridiculously overpowered and I like to just, and people don't seem to understand or appreciate an ability if it's not overpowered if that makes sense like you're expecting it to be extremely good or it's not good at all that's kind of the mindset but i think in terms of balance just what she does i think that you know they haven't gone overboard and they haven't you know underperformed i think these awakenings really complement the hero and we again need to see it in action i think that's when we're going to realize how good or bad these things are um, but like I said, with the Diana as well getting Awakening, I think this gives a lot more synergy between these two characters. So, yeah, I'm I'm all for these. I don't know priority of these. Again, I don't know if they are priority, but I think overall they've done well. Well, there's nothing crazy. There's nothing underlining that seems horrible. Moving on to Diana next, since we did Nora, and I want to kind of go further on the synergy that these two characters have or what they are offering let's get into it she has a lot of abilities basic uh damage is increased by 50 percent dot effect damage and duration are increased if the target has heal block it is swapped for another effect that same way as healing decrease now again this moves on to belladonna belladonna in one of her awakenings does have the ability to heal block completely so that's why they've added this into this ability again nothing insane about this it's there if you really feel like you're going to benefit from it moving on to her guarding or guarding orb her second ability cast a shield on allied witches and light allies equal to 20 percent of their maximum hp damage reflected on the enemy with charge shield is increased so cast seven charge shield buffs on all witches and light allies if the target takes damage to the shield it returns 60 percent of the damage to the attacker so this is really nice this amount of shielding you get it's huge again the witches, depending on the situation or the team setup you have, do not benefit from healing. So a lot of their survivability comes from shielding. So depending on the team setup, this this is a really nice ability and can complement the team and give you a lot more a lot more time to fight. You actually get your abilities out. Moving on to Fury Orb, cast more damage reduction buffs, cast a stronger shield. So Cast six buffs on Diana, reducing the damage taken by 50%. Always good for her. Because remember, she's taking a lot of damage. She can cast Mockery, which is a taunt, essentially. But she also absorbs a lot of AoE damage. So she is constantly just being whittled down. So to have a 50% damage reduction is obviously going to help her. Cast a stronger shield. All allied witches and light allies get shield equal to 33% of their maximum health. Dark allies get half shield. So yeah, I mean... Yeah, they have to obviously put witches here because a lot of the witches are dark. So they're going to still get the 33%. Again, 33%. And then you've got your frost armor from the Nora. You can start to see how the shield's quite effective. Moving on to her passive, we have Diana absorbs and reduces more damage. So this is where, what I was saying before with the AoE stuff. If an enemy deals damage to all allies, Diana absorbs 80% of that damage dealt to other allies and reduces it by 40%. So with the... 50% damage reduction, it's going to be very, very helpful to her. You've got to consider characters like, I want to, we don't really see much of him, but Teodor, who does insane guaranteed crit AoE damage at the start of the fight. Obviously, you're, if anyone asks who's the strongest AoE damager in the game, they're going to say Librarian, even if it's not right. He's just the most well-known. So these two characters alone, they're characters that just deal immense damage at a large scale. She is absorbing 80% of that damage. That is a lot of damage for her to be taking. So she reduces it by 40%. And then if this special uh, Fury Orb is active, there's also an additional 50%. That does not equal 90% damage reduction. 
not that I know of. I don't think it stacks like that. Like I said, that's maths that's a bit out of my wheelhouse, but I do not believe that's how it works. If an enemy deals critical damage to another... Oh, we don't need to read that, really. We're just looking at the Awakening but, uh, stuff. That's her passive. Moving on to her leadership ability. Uh, defense Orb allies and light allies increase their initiative by 10% when receiving casting or increasing shield. So again, with Nora and her, that's a lot of shielding. And Belladonna as well, who does have the chance to shield if an enemy is resurrected. Damage to shield or defense orb allies is reduced. Always good. So damage to shields are good. It's reduced by... 50 percent that's yeah we're seeing a lot more of this these days with um factions where just damage outright is reduced <laughs> i think we're getting to a point where you know characters are just being able to deal so much damage that there just needs to be inbuilt damage reduction otherwise you know whoever goes first is essentially winning the match uh damage uh, the shield received after an attack against all allies is increased so an ally. Oh yeah, here we go. Target the targets all allies. The ally gets a shield equal to twenty percent of the max health after. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to again then um, boost their initiative and increases damage to enemies with mockery. So I think mockery is essentially a taunt, but instead of Diana casting a taunt on herself, she casts mockery on an enemy, forcing that enemy with the debuff to attack her. So a little bit more complicated, but I mean, it's not complicated. It's just a debuff that forces a, an attack on a, a target. So yeah, overall, again, it's just really building on her shielding capabilities and damage reduction, hopefully making her more of an effective tank. She's not a horrible tank. She's just not used very often. So hopefully this, with the Nora Awakening, we could potentially start seeing some defense. Uh, what is it? Defense all teams appearing here and there. Even if, I don't know, I really don't know where, but it would be nice to see. Moving on to Belladonna. I don't know if people are scared or excited for this, but let's get into it. Basic attack, um, slap in the face, damage is increased by 50%. Cast heal block instead of healing decrease. So again, that is synergizing with Diana's awaken basic. So if I could have like, come on. Come on, you know you want to. They're putting free candy signs on these basics. <laughs> Are you brave enough to get into the van? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. I don't. You do what you want, okay? I'm just here to give you the information. Moving on to Pixie Ring dispels all debuffs on two random defense orb members or allied witches. So this ability is the, I think, the bread and butter of Belladonna. It is the ability that gives all your heroes three buffs of evasion very strong you know this is this is the ability and the reason why people try to kill her immediately you do not want her casting this so yeah keep that in mind so i mean not much more to say not much more it's not a huge you, i think you got to consider when thinking of this awakening who are the teams you're versing with when you're using belladonna are they teams that really benefit from debuffs if so this has a lot of use if not then maybe save your, your cubes for a different skill the only thing though with belladonna is she's a very universal hero can be used in lots of content you're not just using her in witch's team you can use her in a bunch of teams so it's very hard to d distinguish who you're actually fighting with her if she was a st stock standard character that could only be used in the witches then you could say to yourself hey what factions counter the witches and are we benefiting from this but she's so universal I think there'd be a time where this would definitely be useful. So, but there's nothing insane about it. Just a D spell. There's so many characters that can cleanse. Belladonna is just now one of them. If you awaken her. Moving on to reanimation. More HP is restored with heal over time. Allies are revived with more HP. Increase the shield cast by the mark. So she is able to cast the tank mark on the enemy. Or enemies. Cast the tank mark. Any tank that damages the mark target will get a shield worth 33% on their max HP, which is amazing for Belladonna. Not Belladonna, Diana. I really feel like they're trying to bring Diana into the scene, make her relevant. Again, we need to test it, but it seems like they've successfully done it. Again, let me test or let someone test at some point. We'll find out. But remember as well, the benefit of this is when Diana gets the shield from this, if she has her ability awakened, she will also receive initiative. So it's speeding up the faction. Again, nothing insane about this. This is... 
I think play put are realizing that they're, they're dealing with such a insanely strong hero that you don't want to absolutely destroy her. But then again, Eva got some pretty gnarly awakenings. Moving on to her passive herbal healer call. Uh, the ally with the lowest HP restores more of it with this effect. So at the start of the turn, she has... Uh, oh yeah, I okay, guess so she got, gets more healing from this. I didn't read any of that. I was reading in my head. I know you can't hear that, but I expect you to read in your head as well. I work with children in a school. That's what I expect from them. You can't read it. Put your hand up. I'll explain it to you. Uh, Bella Donna's maximum HP is increased by 50%. Ah, oh, good luck. Good luck trying to kill her now in turn one. <laughs> oh, wow. So what is her... So we got 12 million HP, add 50% on that because it's awakening. It's not added to her stats, but we're at six. So you got about 18 million HP on this healer at completely maxed out. This is maxed out stats at seven arcane star, seven gold star, gear 15, level 100. You're sitting at 12 million plus 50%. I mean, it would be six, 18, 18.4 million HP. 18.4 million HP is what this nasty little healer is going to be sitting on when you awaken her passive. I reckon, I reckon this is um, priority, a priority skill, just because it makes her so tanky. That's a massive, that's a massive boost in, in health. But again, I, I still feel like they were considering how strong this healer is already before they did this. There's nothing insane in these kits. They're just making her more useful. Um, you know, you got other characters that can... They're almost a whole new character when they're awakened. Ah, oh, I just don't see people being able to kill her before she can cast this. Unless, of course, she is crowd controlled. She's put to sleep. She's stunned. Um, she's slowed down. Maybe you get enough turns in before she is able to cast. But this is definitely going to make her a bit more of a nuisance. But yeah, there you go. Those are the three witches getting their awakenings, which is completing the faction. All of these heroes now have awakenings. It is a full faction. I think this is definitely going to help people if they're using witches in um, the nightmare raids that are coming up and the event raids. But I do know many people love the witches. They are one of probably the favorite factions community-wise. And... I'm not comparing them to like Cloud Wanderers and stuff. People like Cloud Wanderers because they're strong. Witches are definitely strong, but there's just something about this faction that people love. I, honestly, aesthetic wise, they're one of the most appealing factions. They're just beautiful. There are so many colors. I think they just have a lot of synergy. They're probably one of the teams in the game that, I mean, Apart from Diana, which I really think they've tried really hard to make her more useful with these Awakenings. It's one of those factions where just every one of their heroes can be useful in some way or another. There's so many ways you can use them. And they are, they they have three leadership abilities as well. I think it's the only faction in the game that has three leadership abilities. They've got Lilith, so you're running your standard witch team. You've got Tiona when you're running a static team. And you've got Diana when you're running a defensive team. They're just... One of the most versatile, beautiful factions in the game. I think that's why people love them. I'm I'm not even talking about awakenings now. I'm just I just it's nice to appreciate things in the game every now and then. And I mean, design wise, aesthetics they've done really really well. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you're on the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.